Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield here at the Riviera, which is home to so many great shows. It's got the adult shows uh, with the ladies taking the clothes off for the men and dancing, and the men taking the clothes off and dancing for the women, and then fabulous musicians performing every night with two shows. Uh, the first is Forever Doo Wop, which is on at 7 o'clock, and Forever Motown. Both shows incredible from 9. And what I love about it is packed with proper musicians who sing and perform live. Early Clover, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm delicious, thank you. And I tell you why. I'm so inspired by people like you because it's effortless. What you do is as if you were born to do it. There was no other job for you, was there really? Apparently not. I've done quite a few other jobs, but I always came back around to this one when I was younger. It's a great tribute that you've got this show because, let's face it, there's a million musicians in this town, but there aren't that many great ones. And what you have is soul, you have a richness, you have a power to your performance. I I ask all the the stars this question. At what point did you stand on stage and found that that came easily and that you didn't have to think about it anymore? When I was 18. So you were born with it then, let's face it. Yes, I was. (laughs) Tell me about what you do and where it comes from. I mean, you're working hard here. You're doing two shows back to back. And you've got to be as strong at the end of the second one as you are at the beginning of the first one. Well, my dad once said, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. And I love what I do. We all love what we do. And um, it doesn't come as work. It comes as enjoyment and fulfillment because so many people get a lot of fulfillment and joy out of what we do. So that gives us the uh, momentum, um, the energy, uh, which we get from the audience and everything and the inspiration to continue to do this. And what I love about these two shows is the fact that you can't phone it in and you can't fake it. I mean, Motown are some of the hardest songs to sing. They're very high if you get into the Temptations music and things like that. And of course, doo you've got to hit those harmonies or it's going to sound like a car crash. That's right. All, all the, the harmonies in the doo are set aside from most music because in doo it was about the vocals, not so much about the music. And you have to make sure that each voice hits those notes right on time because, like you said, if you don't, you're a train wreck. Motown was about the vocals and the music. So you have to incorporate the essence of both in order to get that one uh, projection uh, from, from, f- for one entity there. You have to incorporate both of them. And it, as a singer, if you don't uh, learn to do that, you could that could also be a train wreck you know it, it can be I imagine you've got to like the guys you're performing with because it's so intimate doo-wop I mean those harmonies have to sort of become one yes. and therefore if you don't like each other or it becomes competitive it's not going to work it don't we are we're like family up in here we we get along we come up in here it's, it's laughter from the time we get here until the time we leave why are they paying you? I mean, you should be paying them. This is a reward to work on these shows. <laughs> well, we never call it work. <laughs> I want to talk about Motown because for me, I'm a little bit biased. I have some family in Michigan and I'm flying into Detroit tomorrow to see them. I don't think there's ever been a greater genre or collaborative effort in terms of success and music anywhere in the world ever. Their music is as current today as it was then, if not more popular. The, the writing, the performance, the stars that were under that banner, were exceptional, weren't they? They were, uh, you could say, that was an exceptional time that was captured in history that um, has lasted for decades and will last for decades to come. I read something in a newspaper the other day that I didn't know, that Stevie Wonder is on a lifetime contract with Motown Records. Who knew? I mean, when they signed that, how could they have known what genius he was going to be? I mean, it's extraordinary. A lifetime contract. It's unheard of. Well, when you get a genius like Stevie Wonder, um, you know, there's an old phrase that Ray Charles can see that, you know, that this kid at the age of 12 playing a harmonica and singing like that, there's nothing else but the sky for him. The sky's the limit. You know, he, he was he's such a wonderful person. I met him on two different occasions and you would think a person uh, of his status uh, would have a little chip on their shoulder or, or you know, um, like some of these wannabe stars, you know, but Stevie is so mellow and down to earth. You know, I was totally surprised uh, at his mannerism when I met him. 
I wonder if they have any idea how good they are when you're at that level. When you wake up in the morning and you're Stevie Wonder, can you possibly know the impact you've had on the world? It's extraordinary meeting those people because to you and I, he's unbeatably a legend. To himself, he's just Stevie, I suppose. He know. He knows because that's why he's so humble. See, most people that don't know, that's why they're not humble. And that's the key to success, isn't it? That's the key to success. When I see somebody like you perform, I don't see you playing music. I see you being music. It's as if it's an extension of you. Some people you see play an instrument or sing a song. Some people feel a song. It's as if you go into another zone. Do you feel like that? Absolutely. When I sing, I express the words um, in a manner that I've lived them because most of them I have. And I project that to the audience and I paint a picture for them as well as deliver the essence of the feeling of the moment as when that was happening. So yes, I, I, I do, I feel it, I become it. And this is a tough town to be a singer because the air is very dry, it's very, very hot, yet you still have to perform every night. Do you wake up in the morning and sort of go, is it still there? <laughs> well, sometimes you wake up in the morning and you wonder, how's it going to be tonight? You know, because sometimes the allergies can be really bad uh, out here and uh, you have to pamper and nurture your voice uh, in order to stay in shape to sing seven nights a week. When you're as gifted and as talented as you are, how do you stop becoming neurotic about it? Because I've met singers who don't have a life because they can't eat this and they can't do that and they can't get up at this time and they have to go to bed at that time. Do you keep it in proportion that this is a gift that will ultimately be there and you'll find a way to get through? Or are you one of these people that's gargling with glycerine before you go on stage every night? Well, I, I can honestly say thank God that it's a gift for me but like I said I do pamper it and I nurture it because you know I don't kid myself because I know that it can be destroyed if I don't take care of it, of it and I do take care of it I notice you're surrounded by a lot of geniuses in this show you're all equally as talented as each other but you all have your own thing which is great I wonder outside of the show who impressed you the most who you've met and worked with because when you look at your CV there aren't many people you haven't worked with in your field who's impressed you the most? Um, I would say Little Richard, Ray Charles, Stevie Wonder, B.B. Um, King, James Brown, Otis Redding, Marvin Gaye, Aretha Franklin. All right, you're showing off now. Calm down. <laughs> have you tried to work out what they, those guys have got and how they got it? Is there any pattern between them or is it just you're born great? You're born with it. You know, um, Charlie Thomas of the Drifters had a saying that you know when a singer got that oomph. If they don't have that oomph, you can tell when they sing whether they have it or not. If they don't have it, they just don't have it. You can't develop it. And it's interesting, even in this town, I've sat in very big showrooms with very big stars who haven't got it. I've sat in tiny little showrooms with three people watching somebody on stage who has got a gift. And that's what's amazing, isn't it? You kind of feel someone and it's how they make you feel. I always remember somebody once said to me, nobody ever remembers what you say, but how you make them feel. And that's what you're trying to do on stage. Leave people with a feeling. Yes, and we do that every night because we all... Uh, come here with the same attitudes every day uh it's all about the audience not about us we are here to serve the people because they come to see us and we want to make them happy when they get here so that when they leave they feel like they've gotten their money's worth and it was worth their while to come and what about the standing ovation at the end i know you get it for both shows almost every night it's incredible the energy you can raise in there um is that the ultimate affirmation for you that you've done it you've got through another day and they liked it well i don't know if the, i would say that's the perfect affirmation um it is an affirmation it, it, it definitely is because they're showing that they enjoy the show but we want that to continue we know we don't want to just stop right there with it and we don't want to say that yeah this is it we want every night to be it every night 
and it is here at the Riviera uh, sell out shows you can get tickets and um, what I love about it is you don't rip people off you give absolute value for money and again without naming names there are shows where you go and you listen to a CD it's almost pointless you might as well go and listen to it in your car and save you $200 here everything's live everyone's live and you really do turn up you're not even on a screen or anything like that that's right <laughs> we <laughs> we definitely uh, put forth the, the, the amount of work that it takes to get this show to the level that it is and um, to try to work hard enough that the people really appreciate each and every individual on that stage because each one of us works equally hard. Well, I hope you appreciate how much love you have around this city and how talented you are and how we appreciate your gift and giving it to us every night. I know it's a lot of hard work. It's Forever Do Up. It's on here at 7 o'clock. Early Clover, so nice to see you. Thank you so much for your time and good to talk to you. It's so good. Uh, I thank you very much for uh, inviting me for this interview. And um, I want to say thank you to Shelly for making this happen. I want to say thank you to um, Red Mercury Entertainment for making the entire show happen. And um, uh, thank you. My pleasure. Good to see you.